and I couldn't repeat that if I tried. Look where that landed, just all in one. Welcome back to Everyday Garage, guys, and we are finally gonna get back on rebuilding the transmission. We took a little bit of interlude. I needed to waste some parts, because if you remember, I broke that oil ring, so we needed to wait on some things. And I just got really distracted by all the crazy rust repair and hinges and everything that needed to be done on the truck. So in this video, we are going to finally get everything rebuilt, uh, at least all the internal parts rebuilt, torn down and cleaned and prepared to get put back together, guys. <laughs> all right, let's get started. All right, guys, the front servo. Now, if you guys remember, like an idiot, I broke the uh, oil ring on here and that didn't come with a rebuild kit. And it's just kind of one of those things where it's hard to source. So I reached out to the parts guy and he got me the original. So this isn't a repop you could tell because it kind of has these, this lip here, this ledge. It's actually kind of a nice tight seal. So we have that. He also was nice enough to send me, which we didn't break, was the other oil ring for front servo piston. So since we have a brand new one, we're gonna go ahead and use it. It's a little bit tighter on the gap. So we're gonna go with that. So to get that in, we'll just go ahead. And if you guys remember, I have my hydromatic fluid sitting over here. So I like to over oil everything because you know, why not? And we'll go ahead and slip it in. Now, one thing that I realized when I was under utilizing, and I did talk about these in my first video. And if you guys haven't seen the videos and you want to see these horrible videos, I'll put a playlist here. You can go check them out. Uh, not some of my best, but they kind of explain how we got here. But uh, I was under utilizing this. So I talked about these, these uh, service Chevrolet transmission hydromatic. There's seven parts to them. And uh, I was mainly only using this book in the videos, but then I kind of was going over these lately and realized this gives a real nice step-by-step as you can see with great pictures. So if you use the diagrams and uh, this book in conjunction with this one, it's really like almost having someone sitting here, here with you telling you how to put it together, what to look for. It's actually pretty awesome. So uh, go ahead and get yourself some of these if you're rebuilding the transmission. Anyways, where are we? So let's get this back together. Now that this is all oiled, this is all oiled inside. It asks us to shove this in. Basically, I feel like that went in way too easy. <laughs> so it doesn't want you basically grooving like, like I was about to do, start wobbling it back and forth. And you're supposed to take this and push it through so that it can slide straight down. And then when you push down, it's not gonna wanna go back and forth. So that's in there like that. And then, okay, we'll go with our new oil ring and just toss it in here. Man, if I manage to put this thing back together right, it should run pretty sweet. <laughs> it's definitely gonna have darn near new everything. So we match up our line here with the locating pin. And bam, our locating pin. This one goes in here, then this retainer, which makes more sense to go that way, doesn't it? And then like that just similar to what the picture here has. And that is the only thing in between. And then we slide this on. So we will leave this here for now as it asks. And we're gonna rebuild this bad boy. Now this is simply, it goes pin, which I don't have and I know where that's at. All right, guys, well, in typical fashion, I uh, lost the pin, but what I did was I went and found an appropriate size drill bit. Upside of drill bits, they always come in great, all different sizes, and I just cut it off. So this will work for our pin, and of course, drill bits are hardened steel, so this should work just fine. Now, as our diagram says, we just kind of throw all of this stuff together. This goes in here like this, and then our spring plug and it explodes. <laughs> ah, good times. And then we'll do this. Now, spring loaded, obviously, as we just saw. Push it in with this screw here and put our brand new oiled pin in. It fits nice and flush, so that'll work. And got a brand new pin. I will take it. Next is 
our line exhaust, which is the other side, right? Yes, perfect. Our spring. Did I pick the wrong spring? Yes. <laughs> Well, uh, you can tell that I put the wrong spring in. You know, they don't, they're not labeled, is what I'm saying. All right, <laughs> all switched around, and that spring, well, eh, okay, god dang it. <laughs> if anybody could tell, I am an absolute professional at this. <laughs> Again, so that spring fit better. This one goes in here, fits nicely, and this just gets a spring retainer, which then comes in from the bottom. Oh, okay. It's installed, sorry. So I was confused because I was like, wait, I have, you know, something here. So this goes here. Okay. And then the spring should go then here. And then the ball should go, we have this little check ball, goes in that little boss there. And we should go together. Like that. And this is where that long screw goes. And the two short ones. Well, you know, I might, you know, might have fooled few people that I might actually know what I'm doing. Everyone watching is like, no, nope, you fooled nobody. Nobody at all. It never actually said put the screws in here, but I think these go here. And there we go. All tightened down. Let's say the thing that I don't particularly like about this one is the diagrams are good, but I think the step-by-step -step in here is a lot better. So <laughs> hopefully that's been rebuilt properly. So I'll go put that in the dun bin and let's jump on this part. Okay guys, so I'll bring you in for the front planetary unit. I actually already rebuilt the rear, so I'm pretty familiar with this. So, but we didn't do the front remember because we had some bushing issues, which I'll go over with in a second, but we will take care of that. Now, it says put it in an arbor press and push a wooden block down and do all kinds of fancy things that we don't have. But I got a C-clamp. And honestly, I did it, like I said, I did it with a rear. It doesn't take too much pressure to get, to relieve this release spring. Let's go this. Yeah, there we go. Push this all the way down. And this is just to push the clutch springs in. That does not sound healthy. All right. And then we just want to weasel this out. Let's see. That does not like those. How did I get this out last time? Okay, it literally just says pry it out with a screwdriver. So, we need a bigger screwdriver. All right, bigger screwdriver. Let's try to leverage it this way, huh? There we go, perfect. And now we can release the pressure. see all the goodies on the inside. Okay, so here we are with it apart. It did not want to come apart. Now, uh, this, the front unit, the three to four shift, I think this is where that takes place, at least in the front servo it does. So this is most likely where we had our issue because if you remember correctly, the three to uh, the biggest problem I had was that with this transmission is that the three to four shift was super delayed and it would only happen when the transmission really heated up. Oh yeah, what do we got? So this here, oh, and I have it here too, guys. See, this is what I mean. So this, sorry, so the camera keeps shutting off, guys. But I just when I went and we'll probably find more in here, like right here. So this is the bearing material, and the bearing material is the bearings that go in here. This one was completely wiped out. Like all of this, I'm gonna guess maybe it's copper or brass. 
maybe bronze, basically this gold coloring. It's supposed to be on this. Now this bushing goes in here like this and it's supposed to be a push fit, flops in and out. So I have a new one for it, but basically that's the material that came off. Now I'm gonna guess that's what the hell happened here. And I'm not surprised. And I'm actually kind of glad to find that because I was really looking for the reason for my issues. Besides maybe just old rubber seals being gone and stuff like that. Now, you're supposed to take these out in a correct order and keep them together. I'm replacing both the metal and the composite or clutch material ones. So I'm just personally going through and looking at each one. They actually seem to be in pretty good shape. So that was all of them. That was it. It was just a little bit of that material in here. Looks like we left another one of those. Definitely got in there. And then here's a little bit more of it. Surprisingly, I don't see any kind of issue here though. Like nothing wrong with the clutch material. It does have a little pieces and chunks missing. Oh yeah, right here. That's real chunked out. So these are supposed to be wavy though. And then when they can get compressed, that's supposed to happen. And then these are supposed to be flat. These metals actually seem pretty good. I'm going to hold on to the metals and we'll go ahead and toss the composites. What I need to try to do is pound this bearing out or a bushing. Let's see if I have a socket big enough to push that out. To get this bushing out, what we're going to use is just some sockets. And that seems like it'll ride on it just enough. <laughs> Way simpler than I thought it'd be. Okay. So that is also the old, and you can see in here, guys, it is torn up. So I have, again, new bushings, so we'll get those both replaced. Doesn't look like anything in here was grooved. Now, the planetary carrier bearing that this rides on was really grooved up. I did show it in an old video. Show you guys again, though. But I had a solution for that. We'll go over that in a little bit later. When we do the reassembly, we'll talk about it. Now... That all is all apart. We'll go ahead and get all of this stuff cleaned up and go ahead and replace the seal here and put it back together. All right, let me get this cleaned up, guys. Everything is nice and clean and ready to go, fresh out of the ultrasonic. I went ahead and got all the soap off with some acetone. What I want to do first is get these bushings in. And these have been sitting in the freezer. I just pulled them out. This should be a little bit warm from the... Uh, uh, ultrasonic, so a little bit of oil, and let's see if we can just tap them in without too much fuss. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, not as good as I hoped. Let's see if we can use this. installed <laughs> not too bad it went in a little tougher than I thought I think I should try to drive this one in from the top though because trying to push that all the way down is gonna be a pain let's see all right well I had knocked that bushing back out because you know of course I made a mistake so it's really hard to tell because these are so horribly worn so I assumed they were the same so no, one actually has a groove for the oil to go to. So um, the best I can tell is there is a picture. This one here kind of shows the oil ring. You can kind of see a ring in there. Truth is, I don't know. But when I first, this is the first bushing I ordered and I got it from when I told him that I needed the rear one. And then this is the one he sent me for the second one. So I'm gonna guess this is the one that actually goes first. It doesn't actually describe you in any way. And I don't think it references it in this manual. Anyways, let's redo this, but we'll do the one with the actual groove. Okay, there we have it. Hopefully I didn't just, you know, <laughs> do that wrong or ruin it. So it's got the slight oil groove. Not really sure how that's supposed to go, but hopefully it's the bottom. And we still see the holes here have the space. So we have our one here. And one there. Hopefully that was our issue the whole time, but at least we have new bushings in and that is good to go, or at least should be.
Now we just need to replace this seal. And this seal is, I mean, it's supposed to be rubber. It is just brittle. It is gone. <laughs> but yeah, there is no pliability left in this thing. That's terrible. So this is just a rubber seal. At least it was rubber at one point in its life. I think it represented rubber. I can just, oh, yeah, oh, and you know, <laughs> just a big gouge in the ceiling surface. These are all the things you want to do, guys. Exactly. This is exactly how you want to rebuild a transmission. There we go. See, I just had to break one side. That's out. And now we can chunk this out. Yeah, this thing is hard as a rock. <laughs> Jesus. That wasn't doing anything. So, you saw me mess up this brass expander. You don't need these anymore. So, I was kind of curious about them. Actually, let me try to... Get that burr there. Um, when I first got it, but this is the new seal. They actually started using the seal uh, from the, guy, the transmission builder. He said in the early 60s so they did away with that brass expander moved on to one that kind of already had this and now this just goes in right into that groove just like that much simpler and it's already flared so it doesn't need the expander and it kind of just rides on it like that we'll go ahead and grease all of it up okay so we have our new these are our four plates and then our steels are here. You already saw them sitting here and they're good. They're made in the USA, so I will take that. And we start with the composite and then just alternate between them. So here, here. Stop putting transmission fluid on that. Now square lines up with the uh, three posts here. There's a name for them, but you know, I forgot. Okay. And now with those in, we just put our springs in. Springs obviously go in the circular ones, big one, then little one. Simple as that. And number six. And little ones. Just put grease on everything. There is no way this transmission is starting dry at all. I mean, at this rate, it'll just be full of fluid by the time I put it together. All right, done deal. And then we take this and place it in here. Let me go ahead and oil this up. Especially since that's gonna be where the seal rides. So put it here and just try to work it back. You don't wanna bend that seal back, so. It's kind of the harder part. I did this on the rear one. It's kind of a pain. Just tuck that seal under. There we go. There we go. That looks good. Even seal to it. And that is all we really need. Okay, turn the seal here so that these holes line up. There we go. All right. All right. Well, uh, if anyone is wondering, or probably who knows how to actually rebuild these, realizes that I immediately did something wrong. Uh, there is actually a seal inside here that we need to replace. And it's so well hidden, I'll bring you in a second and show it to you. And also, it should not be that difficult to put it back together. The springs weren't able to bring it back. I obviously was not, I didn't have something right, long story short. Uh, so I pulled it back apart. Oh, that was the best part. <laughs> Let me show you that. I, uh, 
I was using my rubber mallet because I didn't want to destroy the gear, so I'm pounding it back out, which it did not want to come, and slowly just start, I mean, you can feel it. Look, look at that. Do you see this? Just started disintegrating, so they're just rubber bits all over it. It's exactly how you want to rebuild your transmission. Just put, you know, just tiny little fine chunks of rubber throughout it so it'll clog it immediately. <sighs> the saga continues on how not to rebuild a transmission. I'm at the point though, if I put this together and it works, uh, it's gonna be a miracle. It's really like, if I can rebuild a transmission, guys, <laughs> anyone can, anyone can. That is for damn sure. So here's the seal. It is right there. This one also needs to be replaced. You know what's funny about the seal is the month ago that I ordered these parts, I uh, actually ordered a new seal for this, knowing that I needed to replace it getting in there and kind of getting distracted by the camera, not reading the step-by-step, -step, I uh, forgot about it. So, uh, the good part about it not fitting together, I started having to look through the uh, book to see if I did anything wrong, which, you know, was going to be a given. Uh, and I saw that I had to replace this. So, taking it apart was necessary anyways, you know, cut your blessings, all right? Put it together wrong, so because you needed to take it apart, you know. And this thing is just the same condition, really beat to heck. At this point, darn near concrete. Just trying to break one edge so that the rest will just chip right out. Oh, that's okay. Who needs fingers? And there it is. See, same. Yeah, crap. The brass expander ring. And then you see these little rubber chunks in here. That's what I meant by the rubber bits. <laughs> Woo, I am killing it. Let me clean this out. Now here is that same seal. So it's simple. Just dunk it in some oil and slap it on, except this needs to face downward in the direction. So by downward, I mean, you know, it's kind of conical and downward. Although, I don't know why I'm showing tips, because if you really want to learn how to rebuild one of these, <laughs> watch my video. What are the odds I ripped this? You guys should go down in the comments. Be like, a five to one chance that you ripped this seal. Five to one chance? Nah, it's gotta be way better odds that I rip it than that. Now let's see if we destroyed the original seal that I put on here. No, that looks pretty good. No folded edges. That did go in right. Now, what we're gonna do is actually line this up properly, these holes, and uh, basically I'm just gonna slam this back together. I won't bore you guys twice. That definitely went in a lot easier, seated on the seat ring just fine. Um, I really don't know what the problem is. I did try to clean up that as much as I could. I didn't see any real reason for it not to be going in very well, but, so both seals now have been replaced. Both our bushings have been replaced. They're in really nicely, flushed to where they need to be. Nothing's been covered. Hopefully that's the right way for that bushing. We have our new clutches and our new steels. As far as this goes, this is fully rebuilt. Let's just call it that. That is about as good as that's gonna get. Now, let me clean up here a little bit and then all we have is our big boy over here. That is the last thing to kind of go through, work on, and then we can start Painting, prepping, and reassembly. Oh, and I cannot wait for that. I'll tell you what. All right, guys, let me clean up. All right, let's try these snap rings. Again, these are the original Kentmore snap ring pliers. Because I love old original tools. There we go. Should be just a... It's gonna rub on the splines now, but I'm out of the groove. Just got to bring it up. There we go. Now, with that out, this should tap right out, it says. Well, just pull right out. <laughs> Not bad. That's crazy that all that holds that in is just a simple snap ring. All right. So. And there you go. <laughs> ah, keeping in form. I uh, threw that across the room. So that goes there, into those two grooves. All right, so this is our whole assembly. Got it, set this off to the side for now. I 
and we'll take that out and it wants me to come in here like it always says it says take the snap ring out and discard just like just throw it away but none of the rebuild rebuild kits that are available for this transmission come with snap rings that's just not a thing they do so i'm not really sure how to go about that so we have to save this granted snap rings you can be replaced if you find the right size and all that jazz but my luck this would be some old oddball size so we'll just pry this out with a screwdriver like it says just try to be gentle Damn. and i couldn't repeat that if i tried look where that landed just a hole in one that is easily a reusable snap ring. I'll take it. Bearing is out. Now, I just want to check the bearing. This thing had a lot of miles on it. I don't know how good this bearing is going to be. Yeah, you can hear it's kind of toast. All right, now we get to use one of the specialty tools. Now this doesn't absolutely, absolutely need a specialty tool, but it helps a hell of a lot. So you got these little ridges here and they sit on this and you need to compress this down to get this snap ring out. So if this fits here, this doesn't, so. Yes, and then drop it. Why do I drop everything? Which one seems out? Ooh, that taps way too easily. Now it is sitting proper. Then you just take the J hooks. them through using the existing bolt holes and if anyone is interested this is j5670 kentmore it's in one of the manuals i talked about completely unnecessary but i have this weird obsession with old factory tools so here we are Tighten this down to at least the snap ring. It's working, so I'll take it. Okay, so I'll come in and show you. So here's the plate, and we just wanted to create space so I could take that snap ring out. There we go. And then just release, right? Done. So that's that release spring that goes under there. Should be six of these. And there we go. Six of these that should be able just to pull this bad boy. Let's check if my hands weren't all slippery. There it is. All right, and another one of those. Ex Ooh, this one's actually really good. You know, reverse worked great. So that's actually what rubber's supposed to look like on these apparently. And we do have a replacement for this, and I don't know, that one doesn't look like it has an expander ring. And yeah, pretty solid. I think that's all straightforward. Does this one have, it does look like a seal is there too. And you know what's crazy is that seal is still feels nice and pliable too. This is our gasket, and I'm going to stick this in degreaser. Big bucket of it just to uh, help get rid of all that nonsense. There it is. And out. Now, this is a wear thing, this brass gear here, but thankfully, this looks really, really good. So, we don't have to do that. And all these planetary gears look good. Not worn, broken, chipped, or anything. I was looking them out earlier. 
Yeah, so as I suspect, all the other gearing is going to look pretty good then too. All the planetary gears, I mean, they have wear marks, but nothing where I'm like, I got to, you know, fix anything on this transmission or place it. And then we have our seal here. Snap ring. You know what I meant. And with that camera dying again for overheating, this is where we're at. Basically everything's just apart. Um, it's pretty simple. A couple snap rings and everything's out. Right now I did jump on uh, eBay and I found new old stock bearings. So those will be on the way. 10 bucks shipped. Super cheap and uh, easy to replace. So no big deal. Uh, what we're going to do is, oh, you can also take this off too. You just use the snap ring. It does talk about it. Uh, I am not going to take this off. A couple reasons. Uh, basically, there's no need unless there's kind of wear or anything like that. There isn't. And it does say, you know, you can overstretch this. I just don't want to basically uh, risk it. So we're going to leave it. And um, only thing you do really need to check, there's a key that goes here. If it fits well, if there's any slop, this is fine. All right, guys, it's the next day. I uh, went ahead and got everything cleaned up. I got it all put away. Don't mind the dirty shop, guys. There's going to be a lot of cleaning today. So everything's put away, not complete or anything, just pieces are cleaning away. What I have over here is all of the stuff we need to paint. So our sheet metal is already de-rusted. It's just dirty. It needs to be cleaned up so we can clean everything, get it nice and sparkly, and throw some paint on it. Uh, this is rusty and still caked on grease, guys. Uh, really struggling with this. This is the same problem here. But what I did was a new degreaser I tried for the tail housing and it just cut right through it. I had no problems. This still looks dirty because it needs, it needs to be pressure washed and wiped off, but no stuck on grease. Everything's really soft. What I ended up using was this, the TCP. So I had actually used engine degreaser, all kinds of stuff. This worked the best. I just left it overnight and it was amazing. Um, I did have it in a bucket. Don't mind all this trash I got to take out. Like I said, a lot of cleaning, cleaning in the shop today, guys. And um, I poured it in here, that's why the water's already dirty. I added a bunch more of that, some water. We are gonna toss these in and get these all de um, degreased. <laughs> I'm just glad I finally found something. Cause man, was that caked on. and I just didn't know what to do at this point. It was hours of battle with that thing. Now, I do wanna pop off these badges just because there's a ton of grease behind it. And I wanna paint behind it and I kinda wanna store the badges cause I'm a nerd like that. I already popped these out. These were easy. You just got to tap them in from the back. We're going to have to drill those, uh, grind these out, pop it out, and hopefully we get those out without destroying stuff. And then uh, I got OSFO. So once everything comes out, the cast iron stuff still needs to be de-rusted. So I got some OSFO for that. And then once all that's done, we'll get everything into paint. Oh, would you look at this? This cleaned up phenomenally. So all I did was pressure wash it after taking it out from what you guys saw. I mean, there's no grease on it. It took everything off. That is amazing. <laughs> I will be using that stuff for now on guys. That is my go-to for this. Now, the unfortunate side, as you can see, there is actual rust on here. This isn't just surface rust. This is rust that was already on here and I definitely want to kill that before I put the epoxy on. This will actually fit in my uh, evapor rust container. So it's just going to go in there. And then once these come out, we'll ask for these, but hopefully these come out as clean as this did. That is amazing. So we'll dunk this in here and I took the seal out of here already, rides right there. So it is just in here. We'll let that cook for a little bit. And the best part is, is all the internals will be uh, rust coated. So we don't have to worry about the water from pressure spraying and stuff like that, rusting anything on the inside. Actually guys, after reviewing some of that footage, this video is getting way too long, so I think I'm gonna call the video here, guys. It's a good place to stop. We got everything torn down, everything rebuilt. It's, well, <laughs> as good as it's ever gonna get with me doing it. Um, we have so much coming up. I've got a bunch of rust repair already done on the cab, which is over here. I don't know why I'm turning. And uh, the next video, we're gonna get everything put together. Everything's gonna be rebuilt, paint on the transmission. We're gonna be moving along really fast. Again, videos are gonna be coming out. I told you at least once a week, if not more, because I've been full steam ahead. <laughs> I have so much to show you guys. And again, guys, thank you for all the support. I've been, it's been amazing to see it from you guys. And uh, I appreciate Appreciate everybody reaching out and uh, messaging me at tell me about their projects it always means a lot don't forget to like comment and subscribe and don't forget guys I'm on Instagram and, and uh, Facebook I, I update more in real time there so you'll get more of an update and remember if I can do it so can you I'll see you guys on the next one